How could we possibly be worse than a player who hits the ball 30 feet in the air? I lost to them, but that's because they're a pusher. It doesn't count because that wasn't real tennis. The underlying reality is that you wanted to beat the pusher and it was in fact real tennis. That was a tennis player on the other side of the net, was it not? All of us can relate to the pain and damage to our self-image when we lose to a pusher. When we lose, we're often desperate for an excuse, which is why we often say that it didn't count or that it wasn't real tennis, but it in fact was. And today, I'm gonna to show you three secrets on how you can start beating pushers and get rid of excuses and alibis that will never help you win. The only thing that's going to get rid of the despair and the denial in this situation is victory. So let's take a look. We're gonna be covering three unique strategies. Modified all court attack, the mirror, and the drop shot destruction. Now, what makes these strategies different? It's obvious that the best way to beat a pusher is to attack and get to the net. The problem is a lot of players lack these abilities to effectively deal with the pusher. So here are some methods that you can actually apply to your own game. Since the pusher isn't going to donate unforced errors, that would mean that we would have to end almost every point on our end with a winner. That is asking a lot, even of high level tennis players. To make attacking a pusher work, you need to modify your play and adjust to the realities of slower, higher balls. This can be called modified all court attack. Most advice on beating pushers focuses on aggressive all court attack. Take the pusher from side to side, cross court, down the line, get to the net, hit a winner. For the average player who doesn't have the skills to blow pushers off the court, there is an alternative method that can prove equally effective. What you can do is establish a rhythm first. The pusher hits the ball much slower than you. So come down to their level for two or three balls. Establish your rhythm and play at their pace, maybe two thirds of what you're normally used to hitting at. And this can actually be surprisingly soothing. And when that first slow ball comes, when you know you have that shot and you can take your chance, there will be a lot less pressure to crunch it and take advantage. Now, once you establish the pusher's rhythm, you need to start to probe. So we're not going from gear one to gear six right away, but eventually you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't, but there's no point in coming straight out of the race and spraying everywhere, trying to wipe the pusher off in the first one or two balls. It may take seven or eight balls, and this is the reality, and patience here is going to be your best friend. Now, we have what I call the mirror strategy. The first tactic that we focus on may not actually work if you are getting high, slow lobs. So if you don't have the skills to, you know, hit overheads from the baseline or out of the air forehands, you can try the mirror strategy. And this is mostly mental warfare. And if you're athletic and you're fit, this basically involves playing the pushers game until they break or you break. And that means standing at the back fence and returning those same high balls that they are giving you in return. And this will definitely get in their head. With the mirror, we can turn the pushers psychology against them. Now we come to the third option, the drop shot destruction. What if you don't have the ground strokes to mirror the pusher or you have no desire to hit lobs all day? And that's fine. We have the third strategy. This is one that high school players and club players can often implement very easily. In order to hit a drop shot, it doesn't have to be a clean winner and it doesn't have to be the perfect drop shot either. All we're basically doing is making a ball that goes pretty low and short. It doesn't have to, you know, have tons of backspin and just barely make it over the net. We're not expecting you to do that. What this does, what the goal is, is to try and get the pusher out of their comfort zone. Instead of playing from the backcourt, they're gonna be forced to come to the net and show you what they got with their hands. And if you find that they're weak at the net, well, 
you've probed and you've found the loophole. To retrieve the ball, the pusher is going to be stuck. They have to make a decision. They're either gonna have to hustle back or come to the net and face their fears. Normally, if the pusher gets a short ball, they're gonna float it up high and short. And then you've got your opportunity and even a fast ball through the middle will most likely be enough to finish the point. If the pusher does decide to come to the net, they're vulnerable and you can go for a passing shot or give them a dose of their own medicine and lob it over their head. The drop shot and lob combination is something that could really work well in this scenario. In your game, feel free to mix all three of these strategies at different times. You may need a combination of both and one may be better than the other, so it's up to you to experiment in your own game. In any event, thanks for tuning in and good luck beating pushers. If you like what you learned here, I recommend taking the next step and trying out my free online course. You can get it by clicking the link down in the description.